Hi and welcome to my soul tribe, my name is Miriam Rose. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, set your bell on all, like, comment and share as I really appreciate all of your support. Now let's get on with the video. Greetings, dear ones, I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Today is a revelation that goes further than ever into the differences between the old and the new energy. Today you will understand that before 2012 there was an energy that you no longer have. It is an energy that you are not going to revisit and it is not coming back. It is a new kind of energy that is beginning to place itself on this planet and it is filled with a completely new paradigm of reality. Changing ideas create dysfunction with many. In the past it was said that these new paradigms will often create confusion because things are not as they were. There is often disappointment and some have said, well, things are not happening the way I thought they would for a renewed energy. It isn't like it used to be, is it? I thought it would simply get better. No, it isn't the old paradigm. Just getting better. It's a brand new energy beginning with the old living. The new energy is filled with feelings that are completely and totally different, reactions that are totally different and expectations that are totally different. Within these things hides a truth and the truth is that there is a development going on of the human spirit itself and about how you are changing your ideas about certain kinds of things. Since these things don't all happen to everyone the same, there is often a period of shift, change and recalibration. Humanity is slowly starting to feel more compassion and become less critical of others and their cultures. There is a melt happening but in the process however the ones who are not feeling this way still out. Some of these are so angry at the new energy that they strike out with their frustration in disappointing and inappropriate ways. Some have formed armies and some go it alone, but they are all showing the profound awakening of the changes within dark and light. Imbalance and illogical actions are the result as there are those who will pass to keep things from changing. However, dear ones, that is not what I want to talk about since we have discussed this before. Those things are going to happen slowly within the perceptions of who you are becoming and the issues that show themselves with the shift of consciousness you are having, the battle of light and dark. Today I want to talk about a difference between dark and light that is starting to be seen and is even greater than before. It is the way you perceive things in an older energy compared to the way you perceive things in a new energy. Mostly I want to show you what happens when you drag the old energy into a brand new light objections. You have been told before that this is a time where there can be no more fence sitting. You cannot claim to be a light worker, a compassionate person, and then not be compassionate to humanity. You cannot decide one day to be one thing, then another day to be another. That was the way of it in an older energy, and there was great deceit. You were told before of the drama that people often create over and over, because it suits them and works for them in an older energy. This is because people pay attention to them, and they get what they want, but this is changing, and in the new energy, these people often find themselves missing out, not included, not being agreed with and being left behind. They discover that the old energies are not commensurate at all with the old reality that they had. They are frustrated since the old ways are no longer working. Old energy addiction, processes and procedures that many counted on, which got results before, are now starting to shift and change and are no longer working, but we have said that before. Now I would like to tell you how addictive the old energy is. I would like to start showing and telling by example some of things we have only marginally discussed before. It is time to expand on some interesting issues. Can darkness be addictive? It's hard to describe how humans can be addicted to something that is dysfunctional and dark. The night is dark and if you've survived a certain way because you couldn't see well and suddenly the light is turned on, many long for the time when it was dark. It is because they knew how to navigate in the dark, but they don't know how to navigate in the light. There will be those who are used to a paradigm of struggle. This is what they have understood and have felt was normal. So when the light comes and then there is benevolence, joy and compassion, they long for the old days of struggle over and over. It seems unbelievable that someone would want such a thing when presented with something so much better. Imagine the end of struggle and suffering, replaced by a benevolent attitude of expectation and light. However, many have spent so much time struggling and suffering, complaining and reacting that they can't see the light. Even if it's shown to them, they can't understand it and they don't want it. How could such a thing be? Are there examples of this? Yes, there are examples 
because of a dear ones that you can see right now. Current event. Let's get current and talking about what's happening today. I'm going to explain something that is seemingly unbelievable and exemplifies the difference between a dark energy and a light energy. Let's look at how addictive the darkness is, even when light could create some amazing solutions to needed issues. Instead, there are some so invested in the old energy and who wish to wallow in what they used to know that they cannot see the treasure in the light, which is something they have worked for all their lives. Human beings have an issue. They tend to want something they aren't used to, not even understanding it's dark and perhaps dysfunctional. I want to give you an example that's very, very current. Not long ago, approximately in 2011, something happened in North Korea. The son of the deceased dictator took over. We are not going to mention his name in the channel, but you all know who I'm speaking of. The boy became an emperor overnight, and he had studied with his ego-based father. He had also studied in the West, although under another name. So he knows who you are, dear ones, and he knows the culture here in this country. In 2011, one year before the shift, he was at the crossroads. We discussed it with you then, and now we are going to take it to another level. Let me ask you something. Knowing what he desperately wanted for himself, what would you have done if you were him? Let's review. In 2011, he stands on the precipice of greatness. By 2012, he will be taking over his country, and he is going to be the emperor of all he sees. He has learned what his parents taught him, and all he has done all of his life is watch the egotism of his father. So he has absorbed that method as the way of life for a leader. He needs fame and importance, even more than his father. So more than anything else, he wants to be famous. More than anything else, he wants to be seen and loved by his people. This is what his primary focus is, and what he learned from his father, the mold is set. So put yourself in his place if you can. You are the boy, and you are able right now to follow the father's lineage for North Korea or enhance it. The boy started making his decisions in 2012, when the decree came down that he was the emperor and chairman of the People's Party, you might say. He began to make the decisions of his reign. So again, you are him for a moment. What could you do right now with a clean slate? What would create something that you want more than anything else on the planet? Fame, fortune and respect? What could you do that would almost have you worshipped, be idolized, be seen as important, to be the one? What could you do right now at that juncture, 2012? And I will tell you, he missed it. He missed it. Everything he wanted was never seen because it was in the light. Instead, he actually chose his own demise. If he had seen the light coming, even in his egotistical mindset, if he understood anything about the current feelings on the planet other than his own darkness and subversion, everything would be different today. Think about it for a moment. What would you have done? Here is the option. With total control of his country, he could have been someone that this planet would have put on a pedestal all his life. The first thing he does is to unify the North and the South Koreans, bringing families together after all of those years of strife. He would have been known as the benevolent father of the two Koreans for a lifetime. Then he would drop any ideas of war. He would understand that it's dysfunctional and illogical and would create horror for his people. Instead, he would be the great leader of world peace between his new country and the West. He would walk into the United Nations in New York City to a standing ovation and cheers all around. A planet would love him. He would be on the cover of all the magazines. He would be seen by everyone as a world hero, worshipped and adored by the planet for doing something nobody ever had the courage to do. He'd be seen as wise before his years and it would be a decision that would bring him into the light, helping his people into wealth and happiness, which is exactly what he wanted, getting all the accolades that he possibly could have all of his life, going down in history as changing the earth itself, he would have achieved the ultimate goal of his life. So what did he do? Have you read the paper? Is the dark so addictive that he couldn't see it? Yes, he never saw it. Immediately, he killed a relative who may have challenged him. He was his own man, anchored in the dark, and he completely missed his opportunity. Everything he ever wanted as a young man, as trained by his father so well, everything he ever wanted was his grasp in that year, and the decisions he made instead found him wallowing about in what used to work. However, he is now a pariah for the old energy, raising his hand, making trouble for the planet, thinking that this is what he is supposed to do, and he won't last long. I want to tell you this is how addictive the old energy is. The box of gold was right in front of him, and he missed it. Is he alone? How about you? What kind of addiction does the old energy have for you? Are you continuing to do things that you think are absolutely correct, working with perceptions that have been
been given to you in an old energy that you are still wallowing in? Of course, hearing this, you will say, not me. Remember the Korean leader. He still thinks he is right and never saw it. He invested in struggle. Are you? I have some news. You can't do it for long. First you lose friends. You can't claim to be one thing and be another anymore. So let's start extending this teaching. If the darkness is so attractive, is it affecting anything else? The answer? It is absolutely affecting everything else. There is an entire industry we have told you about that will eventually fail because it has been developed in an old energy, worked in an older energy and has no integrity. The industry is big pharma. We have told you that its fall is imminent and the attributes will come from the ones within it who will expose it. When this actually happens, is it up to you? Since this is a free choice of the developing consciousness of your country. However, let's look for a moment, not at the event, but what it may then lead to. Big Pharma is invested in an old idea that designer chemistry is the answer to healing. This idea has been prevalent for decades and many feel that it is the highest technology available. However, instead and in the light, there starts to appear another idea entirely. The human body has an unrealized awareness and it is actually the master healer. The human body is designed to self-correct, so therefore don't put foreign chemistry into it, but instead find out how to give it elegant, specific instruction sets to heal itself. Make them high technology instruction sets to inform it to heal itself. This is homeopathy expanded. You might say there are processes coming that understand that this human body of yours is so much better than any chemist has ever realized and the new energy is starting to expose this fact. The answer to healing is not chemistry. The answer to health and healing is by addressing the smart part of the human body, giving it instructions to utilize former unknown systems that are ready to create spontaneous remission and beyond. Remember, funding will trail for a while. How much money do you think is invested in the old ways? Right now, there is an industry of investment that is going to fail. So do you think all this money will then be invested into the new methods? The answer is no, not right away. Just like the North Korean leader's blindness, the old ways are just too addictive. Keep it the same, they will yell. The fall is temporary, they will say. It always worked before and it will always work again. Many investors will lose fortunes. The dysfunction is already being seen clearly. When you turn on your media at night, much of what you hear in the commercial breaks is how the chemistry didn't work. Now you get a chance to join others and sue the pharma companies for bad chemistry. You think something is beginning to break? It is. Yes. You see, they are already wallowing in something that's going to make them fail. They are advertising how broke the very system is. Both Big Pharma and their investors don't see the light coming yet, even though it is becoming dysfunctional before their eyes. Major medicine has the same addiction. Think about those who have studied medicine. They study for years and years, then they take oath that say do not harm. They become fine physicians doing their very best to help humanity. Then along comes an amazing non-standard healing revelation, but it doesn't suit them because it was not what they were taught would work. In fact, many of them were told during their training that it doesn't work at all. In an older paradigm, their medical education taught by instructors who they respected informed them that homeopathy and all that it represented wasn't science at all. Many will still believe this, even with overwhelming new evidence that there are things they simply didn't know back then. So expect many doctors to also reject new probable science. The reason is because they are wallowing in their addiction to what they thought was accurate and what they thought worked. It's almost a betrayal for them to even examine it. It's a betrayal of those very good teachers who told them something completely different. Younger doctors and researchers will come along and say, look, I can prove this new approach to you. Just look at this proof we have. Take a day with me and look at this amazing proof. Many physicians will say, no thanks. Younger researchers will say, why not? It won't hurt you to see it. And they will say, because I don't believe it. The scenario doesn't even make sense, but it represents how addictive the old energy is. Watch for it, even within your own physicians. Human nature says that it worked before, it's going to work again. This is what I understand, this is what I do. Don't show me anything new, because I was taught that what you have simply cannot work. Dear ones, physics and biology discoveries will change everything, and suddenly the sun comes out. Suddenly there are new ideas. Can you imagine telling some of the greatest inventors in history to cease and desist? Could you tell the Wright brothers they were crazy? Two bicycle makers should stop trying to create powered light. Should someone have told Louis Pasteur to stop believing in germs? How stupid can you be? Invisible microorganisms? It's fantasy. Can you look at Tesla and say, that's foolishness. You're going to 
electrocute people with that system? Well, there are those who actually said those very things to all of them. The doubters were invested in old paradigms that were so addicting that they actually believed them. It is the same attitude as what is coming soon. So now let's switch and make it a little more personal. Personal metaphysics, dear ones. If you have grown up in metaphysics, perhaps you call yourself a learned, educated, shamanic one. If you have been doing it for years, you know the processes and how they work. Perhaps you have been a healer for a very, very long time and you're proud of your knowledge. You should be. You have helped the planet. You have helped all those around you. Then suddenly, the energy itself begins to shift. The frequencies of energy that you have been working with, which connect you to the source, begin to move. Things start to slow down or not work at all. Yet when somebody shows this to you, instead of looking at it and saying, show me more, you say, I'm shutting the door on this because I don't want to go there. Energy is always the same. It's fine for me. It will return to the way it was. I'm just a little out of sorts at the moment. I will wait. So I will ask, is it working for you? Is life joyful? Healers are starting to lose the connection that they have had. Even meditators are starting to ask where spirit has gone. I sit down and I don't feel it anymore. We have been telling many of you for years now to expect the frequency of God itself inside you. To start vibrating at a higher level, it is beginning to get higher than you ever thought it could be. But you continue to tune in to the older, lower frequency expecting everything to work. It won't. Think about it really. What's your joy factor? If you're tuned to the higher frequency, you're going to feel it. If God is real to you and the frequency has started to live and the veil is starting to be lighter, the older ways won't be near as effective. The magnetic grid of the planet has shifted, allowing new consciousness and everything is becoming tuned for the old soul and the light worker. Have you taken advantage of it? Have you looked at yourself and said, all right, okay, all the things that I knew, maybe, just maybe, they have changed a bit. Or do you say, I know what I'm doing. I have had years of experience and this is the way things work. Is it too personal to examine? Old souls are the ones listening to this. You are the ones who will eventually move into the light, but the old energy is so addicting. In almost all of your dealings, things are beginning to change. Can you believe the story of the North Korean leader having turned down, being adored by the whole planet all his life, having everything he ever dreamt of in a heartbeat? He never saw it coming because he only knew what worked in the dark. He only knew old consciousness thinking. What I'm telling you is this. If you are a light worker, it is time to step into the light. Then things that you thought you knew well may have shifted slightly. This includes what you believe is truth. When you start to turn on the light in a dark room, you see new things. Perhaps your truth was based on seeing things dimly in the dark and assuming what they were. But when these same things are illuminated and you clearly see them, truth becomes fully revealed. Truth can change based on the revelations of time. It changes when the light is turned on. The one who steps into the light is going to live a lot longer, dear ones, because it is going to be frustrating to stay in a place that you don't understand or that's getting worse just because you think you know what you're doing and won't change. This ages all of you. So the plea is this. There is an entourage around you, which comes from the creative source. It is here because your soul has a piece of God in it and it is busting to get out of the box you keep it in. The box is called old, addictive energy. Break the box. Listen. You will never have to unlearn what you know, but in the process of looking at the light, you can enhance what you know and go to the next level in beauty and joy in a smooth transition, not a hard one. This is a new energy and new paradigms are just waiting for you, just waiting. I speak to the healers still using all of the methods they used to. Just because those methods work and worked for years, now we are saying, how would you like to double the efficiency of everything you are doing? Some say, I would, but I know this old way better than I know anything else and that is why I'm going to stay with it. It's good enough for me. Let me tell you something, old soul. You were born to be here during the shift and this transition to move into the new paradigms and to show the light to others. That's why you are here and that's why you were born. It doesn't serve humanity or the planet to stay in the dark just because you are used to it. Listen, I tell you that the hands of transition from the creative source are outstretched to you. They are saying this is why you are here. Walk into the light without fearing what it might bring. It will not upset what you have learned already and will enhance it greatly. In the process, you yourself will start to change. There will be more joy in your heart, more compassion and more knowledge. Think about this. Imagine a balance that you have never had before. Imagine a maturity when new intuitive information flies at you from sources that you don't even know about yet. These are things that you have asked for. What did you try lately in the last 20 years that didn't work? Are you going to try it again? 
the answer is no, and we say why. You say because it didn't work. Did you ever consider that it may have been bad timing? You simply tried it too soon. Try it again. Don't base your future on what happened in the past. It needed the new energy. I leave it here. It is a time of great love, of great change, and the beginning of great compassion. Here you are in a world where the majority of citizens and countries want to get along, and that's new. In the past, one unbalanced leader has been able to take the whole world and put it at war for years. Now suddenly, that is unacceptable. Instead, you have got the entire planet that really wants peace. They want something for their children that other generations never had. Culture after culture, different though they are, they understand the premise that war does not work and never has. An earth that collectively feels this way will eventually snuff out the ones who would want it otherwise. We have told you what is coming. We have told you that the wild card that you call Trump has more things than a wild coming. This creates major shift in an old system. We told you that almost a year ago. We told you that the dark army will be defeated and we told you to expect major shift. So dear ones, this is the juncture between dark and light at a time perhaps that you didn't expect to hear it. We tell you that things are changing fast and if you wish to control that, which is the reality of your life, you have every option to drop the barriers and see what's new. You have the ability to begin to understand better why you are here and to take the hand that is outstretched to you called the creative source, the new children, this darkness that you grew up in. Are you understanding and realizing that your children will not have that? There are children coming into this new energy right now who will never experience the darkness. They will only know the new magnetic grid. They will only know the innate smart body that heals itself. They will intuitively know that war solves nothing. They are going to fight the darkness greater than anything that you are doing. There will be no understanding at all of some of your attitudes because the children will only see the logic of the light. Their patience will be limited for those who are still addicted to something they never experienced and which intuitively does not work. They may have nothing to do with metaphysics and everything to do with the new human being. They may not be spiritual, yet they will have everything to do with God inside. That is the new human, where spirituality is not necessarily a choice, but rather something that is inherited as truth. It is something they are born with, an innate understanding that they are a piece of the Creator, that balance and peace is the primary object of all humans. They will look at you and say, doesn't everyone know this? Does that sound like the old energy you grew up in? Dear ones, don't wait for the kids. We need you now to be mature enough to see the light, drop the old, and meet the new energy head on. And so it is, Cryon. What a profound channeling. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested in deep dives, then please make sure to visit my other channel called Miriam Rose. With absolute gratitude, cosmic kisses to everyone. Till next time, bye for now. Thank you.